All right, here we go. Um, so yesterday we talked about value scales and value. And um, I made a couple of YouTube videos for you guys yesterday. They are really short and rough. They're, I mean, well, they're kind of long and rough. They're nothing fancy. Um, but I did a video on how to do a, uh, an acrylic value scale. And I also did a really quick tutorial on how to do a, an at atmospheric perspective painting. And we're going to actually combine those two things today. I'm going to do it with watercolor. So um, you're going to have a piece of watercolor paper, and we're going to end up drawing a value scale on it and then painting it with watercolor. And we're also going to do a very, very simple atmospheric perspective painting. Um, and so it should end up looking kind of like this, okay? Um, this was just a practice sphere that I did off to the side here. But um, we're going to do our value scale off to the side here, and then we're going to do a really simple atmospheric perspective painting. So here's what you're going to need going to need a piece of watercolor paper, a paintbrush and water dish, a paint tray, a ruler, and either a pencil. I'm, I'm using a Sharpie, a pencil or a pen. I'm using a Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing today. Try not to use a washable marker because if you use a washable marker, things get really crazy really fast. I am going to be using tube paints, but you are more than welcome to use like the, the little palettes. You, those work really great. Okay, here we go. Take our rulers, and we're going to make our seven segment value scales, just like we did yesterday. Okay, so we're going to have our seven inches um, to the zero, and we're going to be kind of off to the side of our paper, okay? So now that we have that, um, we are going to create a value scale, and just like the one that I did yesterday with acrylic paint, we're gonna have completely white on one side and completely black on the other. Now, we don't actually have to paint white because we're using white paper and watercolor, so we just leave that white. So we're gonna make this one here white. Down here is going to be black. And in the center, we want a solid hue or a pure hue. And you can actually take and kind of you know count these in, but this is going to be our pure hue. And hue is just another name for color. Now, with our watercolors, um, I, I'm using the tube paint, so I took and I squeezed out just a little teeny weeny tiny little bit of green and then an even smaller amount of black because black is so potent, you don't need hardly any black at all. I'm going to take and brush my water along the bottom, or my brush along the water of the bottom of my water dish, and then I'm going to gently scrape off the excess water. And I'm going to make myself a little puddle of just water. Okay, so a puddle of just water here. I can even grab more out of my water dish if I need to. Okay, just a little puddle of water. And I'm going to put the smallest amount of green in there, like teeny, weeny, tiny little bit of green. I'm going to go ahead and do this second square right here, okay? I'm going to paint that in, color that in with just the tiniest bit of green. Okay. All right, for my next square, I'm going to take the puddle that I already have, so I'm not wasting any paint. I'm going to grab just a little bit more green and put a little more green into that. Just a tiny bit. You want to be very subtle about this. You can always add more color, um, but it's really hard to get it lighter. Uh, when I do this, I'm going to leave, I don't know if you can see this. Let me pull this down a little bit. I'm going to leave just a tiny white line between my squares. And the reason I do that is because both of these squares have wet paint on them, and watercolor has a tendency to run into um, the space that's next to it. So I'm leaving just the smallest little white space there. Okay, my next one is the pure hue, and I want it to be pretty saturated, so I'm going to grab quite a bit of my green. Before you go putting your, your brush into your color, um, if you are on a paint tray where you've got you know, like the circles, the ovals laid out, rinse your brush out. Okay, rinse your brush out, scrape off the excess water, 
and then grab the black and put it into a puddle. You never want to get colors mixed up in your palette. You want to have a, a separate space for mixing because you don't ever want to get, um, like let's say black mixed into your green. That's, a, that's really bad. You don't want that, okay? Um, all right, so then you're going to go ahead and paint your next square, once again, leaving that little white line. So I'm going to grab just a little more black, mix it into the puddle I already have going on. And you want it to where the squares are filled in with an equal layer of value. You want to make sure that they're even all the way through. You don't want to have it so the half of your square is really dark and then the other half is really light. And my last square, I could take and clean out my brush so I had an absolute perfect black but I know that this black is so powerful, it's so strong, um, you're not gonna hardly be able to tell I have black in here anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint this as is, this really saturated black. And there we go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do an atmospheric perspective painting. And this will be a very simple painting, okay? This is just a practice. It's going to end up looking like this. Um, we're going to have just a couple of layers here, all right? And um, we're going to do exactly what we just did with the value scale. We're going to start here, you know, with our little bit of green and a little more green and then a pure green. Then we'll start adding a little more black to each. I would outline mine in a black marker. You can do yours with pencil or, or black marker, however you want to do it. Okay, using the same paper I was just on, I'm going to turn it so that the white is on top and the black is on bottom. So I'm actually using this value scale I just did. I'm going to use this on my drawing. Um, and I'm going to take my, my marker here and uh, we're going to give ourselves a little bit of an outline, okay? And it should be a, about the length, about the height of your seven inch value scale. And um, you don't want to go all the way to the edge of the paper. All right, and this is just a quick freehand sketch. Um, don't worry about this being absolutely perfect. Don't panic if you can't draw a tree, okay? The bottom layer down there by the black, we're gonna make it just kind of a, just really simple, kind of curved, just a little tiny bit of curve in it. Okay. Then the next layer, um, it's about an inch up from the other one here. Uh, we're gonna have kind of a rounded knob, and then we're gonna make a tree. Now this is just the silhouette of a tree, okay? This does not have to be super detailed and perfect and everything. We're just gonna be doing a silhouette of a tree here. And it's gonna kind of curve off. Okay, in the next one, we're gonna slope it a little bit. So it wants to be like a hill. And we're gonna kind of come up behind the tree and off to the other side. And this next one, we're gonna make just a little more pointed. Okay, not super pointy, but a little more. Okay, then the very last layer here, we're gonna give ourselves like sharp, kind of jagged, actual mountain mountains. The very first layer, or the very, very top here, we're gonna leave this white. This will be just like the white on our value scale. Um, and then the first layer with the really sharp mountains, that's going to be the really light just green in it. Okay, really light just green, then a little more green, then a little more to where you get a solid pure hue. Um, at the very bottom, the very last one should be black, okay? And the one with the tree in it should have black and green mixed together. Now this isn't going to be exactly seven segments like it was for our value scale, so you're going to kind of have to figure it out for yourself um, where you want that solid hue to be and where you want a little bit of green um, with black or just green with, with the white in there. Uh-oh, I kind of have a problem here. One of my uh, or two of my value segments are very, very similar. So I'll either have to lighten one up or darken the other just a little. And I think I will darken this one. You don't want those two value scales, those two value segments to be too similar.
if you uh, if you choose to use this project as your value project, I would definitely recommend um, outlining in black, like I did with the Sharpie. Um, it just makes a big difference. It just really makes things um, stand out a lot more than if you do it with pencil or even with a black um, black colored pencil that would work too, or a black crayon. Remember, don't use a black washable marker. That doesn't end well for anyone. When you finish your painting, I want you to take and sign the bottom right hand corner, just kind of right below this perspective painting we just did. You have some space that's left over probably. So if you get done with this painting and you want, have some fun. Try to paint like a sphere. You can see I just did this, just painted this in a couple of minutes. Um, try to paint like a sphere or a, a cube or something. Just have fun with trying to paint um, using these values. I think I'll do, I think I'll do a pair. I like painting pairs. All right, um, I am going to let you guys go. If you need help with anything, just let me know. Um, I'll have my email with me. Um, all right, you guys have a good one. I'll see you, I'll see you Tuesday. Bye.